This is part four in our series of lectures on section 4.5 involving images and inverse images of sets. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the behavior of inverse images with respect to unions and intersections. And here's the theorem that we're going to consider. We give ourselves a function from set A to set B, and we give ourselves an indexed family of sets. Here I've, I've indexed it by the natural numbers, but it, it really could be any indexing set. It could just be two sets, it could be denumerably many sets, or it could be uncountably many sets. It doesn't really matter. We have a collection of subsets of the codomain B. Then the following are true. If we first take the union of all of those sets, and then we take the inverse image of it, the theorem asserts that that's the same as if we first take the inverse image of each of the sets and take the union of the uh, resulting family of sets. So in other words, the operations of taking inverse image and taking unions commute. You can, it doesn't matter what order that you do them in. And the second part of the theorem says exactly the same thing about intersections. If you first intersect all of the sets and then take the inverse image, that's the same as first taking the inverse image of each of the sets and taking the intersection of what you get. So this is a nice result, and it's a result which, by the way, is, is a result that you should always remember because you're going to see it in more advanced classes. You're going to make use of this in more advanced classes. So um, the basic point here is that inverse images behave very well under set operations. So in the balance of this lecture, we're going to write the proof of this one here, and I'm going to leave the second one as an exercise for you to do. So in order to do it, of course, we need to recall two things. We need to recall what is the working definition of the inverse image of a set, and what is the working definition of a countable union of sets, or a denumerable union of sets. So if f is a subset of the codomain B, then f inverse of f is the set of all x in the domain such that f of x maps into set capital F. And the working definition of the denumerable union is given here, and I'm just putting a sort of a generic name for the set because on the left side you're taking a union of things that are subsets of B, uh, whereas on the right side you're taking a union of subsets of A. So um, I, I, I wanted to use sort of a generic letter so that you wouldn't get too confused. We're going to apply it both to this side and to this side. So if you take the union of sets Zn as n runs from 1 to infinity, the working definition is it's the set of all Z such that there exists an index M, so it's one of these ends, you see, there exists a specific index m such that z is an element of that particular set z sub n, z sub m. Okay, so using those working definitions, we want to try to prove that these two sets are equal, and we're going to do it in the usual way by showing that um, this is a subset of this, and vice versa. Okay, so let's begin by proving, so here's, I'm just reminding you what we're trying to prove. Let's begin by proving that this thing is a subset of this thing. So why don't you put your video on pause and see if you can do that first inclusion, proving that this is a subset of this. Give yourself an element of this set and prove that it must lie in this set. Um, and what is this left side a subset of? This is a the, this thing is a subset of the codomain, so when you take the inverse image, it's a subset of the domain. So you should begin by saying, let x be an element of this set. Then write down working definitions and see if you can ultimately show that it must be an element of this union. Put your video on pause and give it a try. Okay, so here's my proof. You'll notice I start by taking an x in the left-hand side, and ultimately I'm able to prove that it's in the right-hand side, which gives me this. Okay, so let's look at the details. To say that x is an element of f inverse of something, it doesn't really matter at this point what that something is, it says that f of x is an element of the union. So by definition of inverse image, f of x is an element of the union. 
Now, to say that something, this thing, is an element of a union is to say that there exists an index m such that f of x is an element of f sub m. So don't forget your quantifier. Don't just say f of x is an element of fn, because I'm going to say I don't know what you mean by f sub n. There's no quantifier. So there exists an m in the natural numbers such that f of x is an element of f sub m. Now, to say that f of x is in f sub m is to say that x is an element of f inverse of f sub m. So now we have a bunch of sets here, and we know that x is an element of at least one of them, and therefore x must be an element of their union. So that proves this inclusion. Now once again, put your video on pause. See if you can prove the opposite inclusion. Then if x is an element of here, then it's also an element of here. Give it a try. Okay, so we give ourselves an x in the right-hand side. And now the first thing that we should see is the union. We should ignore this for the moment. To say that you're in the union is to say that there exists an index m such that x is in the mth set that appears here, so f inverse of f sub m. And now by definition of inverse image, that says that f of x is an element of f sub m. And if f, f, f of x is an element of f sub m, then f of x must be an element of the union of all of these sets, because it's in at least one of them. And since f of x is in the union, x must be in the inverse image of that union. And that's, that's the left-hand side. So that proves the opposite inclusion. This is the subset of this. And so we've done everything. That completes the proof. And as I said earlier, I'm going to leave the proof of part two of the theorem to you as, a, as an exercise. But the, the argument is quite similar to what I did here. Really, the, the big difference between union and intersection is just the choice of the quantifier. To say that x is an element of an intersection rather than a union is, instead of saying that there exists an m such that it's in n, it's for every m, it's, this would be satisfied. And if you just uh, replace your there exists by for every, I think you'll find that the proof works. So I'll leave that to you as an exercise.